I want to read here from 53 and 3. He is despised and rejected of men. For thousands of years men read this scripture. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. He was wounded. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed. He was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He's brought as a lamb to the slaughter and the sheep before his shearers is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off. Out of the land of the living for the transgressions of my people was he stricken. He made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death because he had, no, had done no violence. Neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. I said it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days and the pleasure of of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied by his knowledge. Shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Sad story. All through that time before the crucifixion, from the time that Mr. Isaiah penned these words, it was a sad story. No victory in this, folks. Matthew 28 and 1. I want to read to you just a little bit from the New Testament. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sceptre. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and set upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear for him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the woman, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. I'm telling you, folks, here's the pinnacle of the word of God. I said, this is the pinnacle of it all. He's not here. <laughs> He's not here. He's risen. Not only is he risen, but he's risen as he said. He did what he said he was going to do. I want to just tell you this morning, the promises of God are yes and amen. And whatever he said, he has done, he will do. Amen. He is not here. He's risen as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. In the book of John, chapter 11, I'm going to stop reading here. I'm going to read from verse number 25. John 11, 25, and 26. John 11, 25, and 26. Verse number 25. Jesus said unto her, I'm the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Father, we stand this morning frail, no abilities, dependent upon the unction or the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Just over the next few moments, God, that you would speak through us. That you would transform us. Use these lips of clay, this mind, this heart, to convey what you would say to us here in this house today. We bind hell today. We bind every demon, every principality of darkness. We bind the devil himself. In Jesus' name. And we claim liberty and victory in the Holy Ghost to preach the gospel. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. When those ladies approached that tomb the first day of the week, loaded down with spices, they'd come to anoint the body of our Lord. They were weary. They were weary from the toil of the Passover. They were weary from all of its activities. They were weary of the stress and the strain of what they had been through as they had observed our Lord's body broken and bruised, hung on a tree. As they approached the tomb that Sunday morning, their minds must have been very weighted. Not to mention what had happened in the last few days, but just what laid on their mind they were going to witness when they came to that tomb. Can you imagine? He'd been dead three days. They wondered if there would be soldiers there. They wondered if there would be trouble. They wondered if they would be hindered from doing what they believed they should do. They wondered how they were to remove the stone at the door that they might reach his body. I don't know exactly where it happened. I don't know exactly where they were. As they entered that place, as they entered the graveyard, as they came in among the tombs. But something happened. All of a sudden, if they hadn't already dealt with more than a human could deal with, if they hadn't already been through enough, if they hadn't already witnessed enough, if their, if their nerves were not already shattered enough, the ground began to shake. For the second time in three days, there was a massive earthquake. Friday afternoon, about three o'clock, after three hours of total darkness across the earth, the earth shook hard. Graves opened. Saints were seen walking around. In Jerusalem. And now just when it seems like there was some closure to all of this. They'd grieved. They'd mourned. They'd come to do their last respects. They'd come to anoint his body. The earth begins to shake again. And when they reach the, the tomb of Jesus... Not only do they see a tomb there, but they see dead men laid everywhere. At least they thought they were dead. They appeared as if they were dead. And then they raised their eyes and behold, the stone is rolled away from the tomb. And there sits on that stone a man. No, 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 not a man, but an angel is sitting there. The Bible says in Matthew 28 and 3, his countenance was like lightning and his raiment was white as snow. In verse number 5, and the angel answered and said unto the women, fear you not, for I know that you seek Jesus, which was crucified. I've come this morning to this pulpit on this Easter Sunday morning. I'll be honest with you, it's a scary it's a scary place to be. To think in the frailty of one man that I must stand here and lift Jesus to a pinnacle of where he must be preached. To stand here this morning and to effectively preach the greatness of our Christ. But I can tell you this morning, I come with great joy. I come so excited in my heart just knowing that I bring good news of the gospel. 
This is really good news, folks. I can tell you, when I read from Isaiah 53, I don't care how many times you read it, you may be thankful that he did it. You may be thankful that he endured. You may be thankful that, that he bore. I said that he bore. You, you may be thankful that it all happened. You may be thankful that he was willing to pay the price. But there's very little victory there. I said there's very little victory in that Old Testament scripture. I appreciate the promises. I appreciate the promises of the prophet. Thank God that they knew that they foretold what was to come. Thank God that it's a schoolmaster to the new. Thank God it's there. But that's little victory when I read those scriptures. But when I come to this place that we are this morning, there's great victory that rises up in my soul. There's great victory of the good news that Jesus Christ has won the victory over death, hell, and the grave. He's won the victory over sickness. He's won the victory over disease. He bore my sins. He bore my sorrows. I'm telling you, there's great victory this morning in what He's accomplished for me. I wasn't there when they crucified Him. And neither was I there when they put Him in the tomb. Just like the way these ladies were. No, I wasn't there. I I wasn't there to see the angel that came and rolled back the stone. I want to tell you this morning um, that Christ arose and He lives. I said He lives. And the tomb couldn't hold Him. And neither could death hold Him. The empty tomb this morning testifies a a tremendous victory in our lives and it tells us some things this morning that I think we ought to know I think that we ought to know this morning that because a tomb is empty oh thank God for Calvary what a sight it must have been thank God for Calvary and I do cling to the old rugged cross I do cling this morning to that cross I do thank God for the blood we sung about a little while ago but this morning I thank God for the victory that that empty tomb gives me over sin. I thank God for the victory over sin this morning. I may not know all of your names this morning. I know the majority of them. But I can tell you something that I do know about every one of you. And you was born in sin. I said every one of you was born in sin. All of us in this building was born in to sin. By Isaiah said in 64 and 6, but we are all as an unclean thing. And he said, all of our un, all of our righteousness are as filthy rags, and we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. Those that know not God this morning, no matter where they are, whether they be in the house of God or on the fishing bank or over at Walmart, it matters not. They are, Paul said in Ephesians 2 and 1, dead in trespasses and sin. Paul wrote in Romans 7, and 24, O wretched man that I am, who I said, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Um, Well, I have good news this morning. I do know the empty tomb tells me there is victory over sin. The empty tomb tells me this morning that there is victory. Paul said, who was delivered for our offenses um, under the heavy load um, of sin? My Savior made His way up Calvary's hill. The Bible says, for He hath made Him to be sin for us. Uh, He who knew no sin. I said he who knew no sin. 1 Peter 2 and 24 the Bible tells us who for his own self bear who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead in sin should live under righteousness by whose stripes we are healed. By whose stripes ye were healed. He said I apologize to you. He said by his stripes ye were healed. He carried our sins to that tree. There was a sacrificial death on that day. The penalty. I said the penalty for our sins was paid but that's not the end ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Paul said in Ephesians 4 and 8 wherefore he saith when he ascended up on high he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Verse 9 says now that he ascended 
ascended. What is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended the same also that ascended far above all heavens that he might feel all things. Could I just tell you this morning when he died on Calvary Street, they may have laid a body in that tomb. But I believe this Bible, if I understand the scriptures correctly, he walked into the chambers of hell's dungeons and he took the keys from the devil. The one of those keys, he unlocked the doors of paradise. I said he unlocked the doors of paradise. And all those who died a believer in, in God Almighty, those Old Testament saints, you say, well, I thought everybody got saved after the new. No, I can tell you those that followed God, those that kept the law, those that were believers in this great God of ours, those that trusted Him, they were there, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yes, just to, can't you imagine this morning what must have been going on? The Bible's not real clear, and I'm not one to speculate a great deal, but I do know something happened that day in that lower chamber of the earth. The saints from the Old Testament, they must have been watching. There must have been a great deal of activity that was going on. Oh, yeah, the devil and the imps of hell must have been celebrating because um, that which hell had been trying to do from eternity past, um, trying to prevent, um, was about to be a reality. The desire of hell has always been to protect his position and his power over mankind. Would somebody say power with me this morning? Um, he wanted to keep power over you. He wanted power over me. I remember a time, Richard Fletcher, that he had power over me. I remember a time I was bound. I was remember a time I could not get loose. I remember a time I was dead in my sins. I was in the shame of my mom and daddy. I lived a life of degradation. But it was because he had power. He had power over me. Amen. See, if you're not saved this morning, he's got power over you. If you're backslidden this morning, he's got power over you. Oh, yes, he does. You say, oh, I'm a free man. I live in America. I've come to tell you this morning, if Christ is not Lord of your life, you are living under his domain. You're living under his power this morning. I beg you, come out from under it. I beg you this morning, escape the grips of that wicked one. There's hope in Christ this morning. There's liberty. I said there's liberty. There's deliverance this morning. There's salvation, rich and free, because the tomb is empty. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. There's victory this morning in Jesus. Uh as he walked into the world of the damned. I'm talking about Jesus. As he walked into the world of the damned. As he walked there. I can just hear. I can just hear old Abraham say. Oh I say I hear somebody. It sounds like the one that called me from the earth of the Chaldees. Oh I believe it must be him. It must have been. I believe old Moses must have said. I had a bird, heard a voice come out of a burning bush. Surely you mean to tell me it must be him that's coming forth here into this place. Um, I believe old Bartimaeus said, um, I believe it's him I heard. Ask me what it was that I wanted. Uh, are you listening to me this morning? I believe old Lazarus must have stood up uh, and said, I heard this voice one time. I was in this place. This is my second trip here. But thank God Almighty, that voice I heard calling us again, folks. We're fixing to leave here. Are you listening to me? Oh, I believe that's with a Nan's son. <laughs> Jesus, he, I believe he spoke up and said, let me tell you boys something. I've been here before. Oh yeah, <laughs> they had my body stretched out and the undertaker was carrying me to the, to the place to bury me. <laughs> I was on my way. My body was on its way down to the graveyard. And the voice um, that I hear coming down that road, the voice that I hear approaching us is the voice that I hear heard that day that said, Stop! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! And he touched me and I became whole. And got up. Are you listening to me this morning? It must have been that way. 
What about when he took the keys? Just what about it? When he took the keys from the devil. It's almost unbelievable, isn't it? I'm not, all of those years, he's had it all. Oh, ever since Adam and Eve in that garden, he's controlled it all. Oh, yes. Yeah. He controlled, I mean, thousands upon thousands upon thousands of gallons of blood has been spilt from lamb after lamb after lamb after lamb, satisfying, trying to satisfy the justice of God. Oh, for thousands, thousands of lambs, little, little baby lambs uh, have been brought, those without spot, uh, those without blemish have been brought uh, to the temple, uh, brought to the house of God, their throats had been slit blood going everywhere Our family after family come year after year and it was all just to pacify it was there nothing could do but this morning I've come to tell you that there's one lamb I said there's one lamb that's been brought to the slaughter there's one lamb a perfect spotless lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world has been brought to Calvary's hill put in a bar of two of a rich man but you listen to me the tomb is empty this morning the tomb is empty and the victory is won the victory is won he took the key and entered into the door the altar call was given and the saints ascended this resurrection morning we're free from the bondage of sin Romans 4 and 25, Paul said, was raised again for our justification. Could I just come this morning and tell you that the bill of our sin has been stamped, paid in full, perfect in Christ. That may not mean nothing to you, but you, maybe you weren't as lost as me. <laughs> paid in full, perfect in Christ. How am I? The Bible says plainly in Romans 10, 9, if we'll confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It's not just all about the mouth, folks. It's about the heart and the mouth. It's faith and believing that he did the work and it was sufficient. I said it was sufficient. See, a lot of men died, a lot of men been buried. But he's the only man ever got up under his own power. He's the only man said, they're going to, I'm going to lay my life down for you. But I'm going to tell you, after three days, though they destroy this temple, I'm going to get up, raise it again. I'm telling you, folks, empty tomb testifies that the devil has lost. I said the devil's lost. I said the devil's lost. You know, it, it, it'd be good. It'd be good today if we let him know he lost. You know, sometimes that's all it takes is just to testify that he lost. Amen. You know, he acts like he didn't lose a lot of times. I said that's the way he acts. He acts like he didn't lose. I tell you, I'm standing here this morning. I should be in the bed. But he lost. I said he lost. I've had, I've had that malaria for years now. It's a three-day deal, folks, I'm telling you. It's a three, it ain't never been nothing but a three-day deal. But I'm here this morning. I'm in strength this morning. Oh, yes, I'm in strength. You say, well, if you had much strength, it wouldn't have come on you. Well, I'll talk to you about that later. But I can tell you, I'm delivered. I said I'm delivered from it this morning. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Amen. When Christ died on Calvary, the devil thought his long plan had finally worked to rid the world of the salvation plan of God. You ever thought about that? You know, he thought that he'd come finally to the victory. You see, he was the one that had led Cain to kill Abel. He was a part of that. Cain didn't just do that on his own. In the midst of that, God sent Seth. I said he sent Seth. He caused Abraham in unbelief, listening to his wife, to take that concubine Hagar, Hagar and have a son 
named him Ishmael. It was sin. It was wrong. But God still gave a miracle in Isaac. He caused Joseph's brothers to sell him as a slave into Egypt. Amen. I saw he was behind it all, folks. You got to know that. The devil's behind all of that deal. But the Bible says that God sent a man into Egypt. (laughs) Oh, yeah, it's all working in God's plan. See, sometimes we get discouraged. I'll be number one. Just go ahead. Just go ahead and point your finger at me if you want to. I'm the one. I'm the one. I get discouraged. But you got to know it's in the plan of God this morning. And you've got to know whatever happens, no matter what it is that happens, that God's plan is going to come to fruition if you stay the course. Now, we can all quit. We can all quit and go home. I said we can all quit. We can all throw the towel in when things get going rough. And that'll be, it'll be over. But the plan of God will come to pass if you'll be faithful. Amen. The devil caused David to sin, a sin worthy of death. You're hearing me, he murdered. I said he murdered. He committed adultery. But God gave him a repentant heart. He could make it right. Caused Herod to kill the babies, all the baby boys two years and under. But God talked to Joseph and said, take that boy into Egypt, named Jesus. He caused Judas to betray the, betray the Lord, leading to his crucifixion, to what he thought was a victory. Over the redemptive plan of God. But on that resurrection morning. When Mary got to the tomb. The stone was rolled away. I said the stone was rolled away. Had somebody stole his body? No, not a thief in the house. Maybe the chance an angel that sat on the stone may have rolled the stone back. So Jesus, get out. out, Not on your life. If he can get up from the dead, he don't need somebody to roll the stone away, folks. <laughs> I said, if he can get up from the dead, don't worry about the stone. <laughs> you know, you could take that a long ways this morning. If he can get up from the dead, you don't have anything to worry about. I said, you don't have anything to worry about. I want you to hear the word this morning. First Peter three twenty one and 22, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who's gone into heaven, is on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. First John 3 and 8, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. What was that purpose? That he might destroy the works of the devil. Colossians 2 and 14, Paul wrote it this way, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. Did you know there was a record kept against you? There was ordinance, there was a handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphant over them in it. He won the victory over the devil. You know, there's victory. There's victory in the empty tomb this morning. I said there's victory just knowing that the tomb is empty. It testifies to us that the victory over death has been won. Not a one of us in this room that stood at the coffin of a loved one that hadn't thought, where is the victory? We've lost. You know, there's no victory in death this morning. Not for us. It is for the one that's going on. But there's no victory there for us. I stood there, stood at my own dad's coffin, stood at my grandmother's coffin, my granddad's coffin. I stood there. There was no victory. People standing and weeping and broken hearted at the loss. There was no victory. No victory at all. But Jesus said, I'm the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though a dead, yet shall he live. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Martha said to him, said, if you'd have been here, Lazarus, my brother, wouldn't have died. He said, I'm the resurrection. She said, I know that. 
I know in the last day. He said, no, 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 no. I am the resurrection and the life. See, physical death to us is no more than an entrance into glory. Paul said it this way. We're confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. In Philippians 1 and 21, the Bible says, for, to me to, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Paul went on to say in Philippians 1 and 23, for I'm in a strait between t- two, having a desire to part and to be with Christ, which is far better. You see, death this morning is no more than a flower pot from which a lily is going to bloom. That's all it is. Saints, we're eternal this morning. I said, we are eternal, every one of us. Those of you, everyone that's born of God, we're eternal, and we're going to have eternal life. Not just have it, but I got it right now. I said, I got it right now. I'm eternal this morning. I'm eternal on this earth until God's finished, and then I'll be eternal with him forever. Listen to this great apostle. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It's sown in corruption. It's raised in corruption. It's sown in dishonor. It's raised in glory. It's sown in weakness. It's raised in power. It's sown a natural body. It's raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body, he said. There is a spiritual body. And then he concludes. So when this corruptible shall put on incorruption and this mortal shall put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that's written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin. The strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God. He's given us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Victory this morning. Revelation 20 and 6. Blessed and holy. As he that hath part in the first resurrection, on such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years for all of eternity, folks, because Jesus rose. Victory over sin, victory over the devil, and victory over the grave. This morning, if you don't know God, You're in bondage to sin, you're in bondage to the devil, and you're in bondage to death. Many a man said, I fear not. I fear not man, the devil, or death. And maybe they didn't fear man, and maybe they didn't fear the devil. Maybe they never met a man big enough to put fear in their heart. Maybe they never faced the devil and knew what they were facing. But whenever they faced faced death, fear always gripped them. I've got a message I've been working on for a long, long time. I pick it up, put it down. God's never turned me loose on it. But one of these days, I'll stand in this pulpit and preach the last words of men as I've studied that over the last year, year and a half I've looked at men, man after man those who were the vilest those who were the strongest those who were the most adamant agnostics those who were the most confident in themselves And see, this morning, that's what you're saying. If you never surrendered your life to Christ, you said, I'm confident in myself. But every one of them, when they came to the close, they were as babies. Fear ripped their hearts to face eternity and a holy God. This morning, Calvary's real. I said, Calvary's real price that was paid is very real but there's an empty tomb this morning that tells us there's victory over it all and it 
was bought, paid for, and won by Christ for you and for me. Would you bow your heads with me?